All right, what we're doing today is, this is my neighbor Darren's power cord. It burned out, and I can tell you exactly why. Because if you're looking at the power cord, I'm gonna try to get a little better shot of this, holding this. Um, this is all in here, it's all corroded in there. And uh, so what ends up happening is the, uh, I cut all that out, you can see. Back it off a little bit. I'm gonna hold this like this. And what happens is, is when the two cords connect, this is not a good connector. Water gets in, it gets in through these holes, and it corrodes the terminals in there. And the terminals are, these are brass, but the terminals coming from the uh, male end are steel, and that just corrodes the shit out of it. So the two things that you have to do is, first of all, you put an electrolyte grease on these fittings, and. Uh, see this one right here you put uh, electrolyte grease on these fittings okay and then when you put the two together this is kind of interesting uh, you know how they go it goes lock in like that okay so you can see how it fits now here's the kind of nifty thing if you if you turn it uh, to clip it in to lock it in place like you're supposed to you end up using only about half of the terminal, as you can see, about half, maybe a little bit more than half, maybe five eighths of the terminal. So what you want, don't want to do is, unless you have to, don't lock it in place. And the next step is, is this seam right here, right here, this seam right here, where they two to go together. Once you get these together, put a bead of silicone around it, and. That way the water won't go get into the into the wire and it won't corrode it. And these ends right here, put a little silicone around those because those are just like a kind of a heat shrink. But if you put a silicone bead completely around where these two connect at, and you put electrolyte grease in there, you won't have any problem whatsoever. Um, I've got two 30 amp cords running to my boat, and they've been on here for two years in all kind of weather. And I've never had a problem. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have probably pulled many times uh, 30 plus amps off my cords uh, because I run two ACs during the summer, and they take up about uh, 24 amps. And then if I if the hot water heater kicks on, it takes another 10 amps. So it's going to run, uh, you know, up plus 30 amps. And the cords are made for 30, but they'll actually pull up 40 amps. Uh, you're not supposed to, but they will pull probably around 40 amps. Uh, but uh, what I normally do is I just leave my hot water heater off and I turn it on in the morning while it's still cool out before I'm running the air conditioners or both of them. And uh, therefore, I'm only pulling about uh, 12 with the air conditioner and then another 10 with the hot water heater. And once the hot water heater gets out, gets done, I take my shower and everything's good. And uh, if you've been watching my videos, you know my kitchen completely microwave, oven, toaster, coffee maker is all hooked into my inverter so I'm pulling no juice off of that. Um, the only other juice I'm pulling in the boat is uh, uh, my television set and things like that but that can be connected to the inverter too but right now I'm just running electric but it doesn't draw that much. So uh, but that's uh, how you do it so that's just kind of showing you what uh, needs to be done on these cords. And if you do what I tell you to do, you won't have any problems. So that's it for this video. Say goodnight, Mel. Goodnight.